Six SEC teams go to work this Saturday, April 12th, for their spring game, including the Vanderbilt Commodores and a new head coach, Derek Mason. And to analyze the Commodores as they try to put the finishing touches on what is their addition for 2014 heading into August practice, we bring in Jamie Hancock of PrepsNation.com. He also does work for SEC Rider. Jamie, thanks so much for joining us. As always, it's my pleasure to be with you, Mark. Yes, sir. It's good to see you again. Let's talk about quarterbacks. Of course, Vandy has a competition between Pat and Robinette, uh, 11 of 17, 81 yards. Those were some numbers going back to a scrimmage that they had a couple weeks ago, and Johnny McCrary uh, hit on 9 of 13. He's a dual-threat kid from Georgia. So how do you shape up this quarterback competition at this point heading into the spring game? Pat Robinette brings the limited experience to the position for the Vanderbilt Commodores. He's a guy that, that took that Tim Tebow type role from when Tebow was a freshman at Florida. Robinette is a big physical running guy who did the job in short yardage and as well uh, in the red zone and had a lot of rushing touchdowns uh, for the Commodores out of a shotgun set and is a very physical runner. And he's an adequate passer. He's a young man coming into this season. They would like to see his passing game be a little more refined to go along with his athletic ability to allow them to do what they want to do on offense here with Carl Durrell coming in as the offensive coordinator. The McCrary kid is a little more interesting situation. He is a red shirt freshman out of the state of Georgia, and he's a guy so far through spring practice who has really, I don't want to say that they didn't have expectations for him, but he has somewhat surprised some observers there with the Commodores by the, the way he's picked up on the offense, the subtle changes that have been made with the new staff coming in. He's really done well, and they're feeling pretty good about where he's at in his progressions. As the quarterback competition rolls on, there's the feeling that McCary may actually come away with that position. And, Jamie, you mentioned uh, offensive coordinator Carl Durrell. He, of course, of head coaching experience at UCLA with the Bruins. Look at the running backs, they seem to be in pretty good shape uh, there in Nashville with Jaron Seymour. Probably scored the quietest 14 touchdowns in the history of the SEC. And also Brian Kimbrough, who, uh, again, we mentioned the quarterback play in the scrimmage a couple weeks ago at 55 yards in that game, ran for 341 last year. Yeah, the Commodores have to replace uh, the guy that was slated to be the starter most of the year when he wasn't banged up, Wesley Tate, was a was a, a – a running back who was long and lean with his stride, and so he stayed a little bit banged up but was a good football player. And you mentioned Jerron Seymour and his 14 touchdowns. He's a more physical back, and he's a nice in-between-the-tackle type runner that Derek Mason would figure to like coming over from the Stanford Cardinal. Brian Kimbrough was one of the more heralded recruits at Vanderbilt over the last number of years as he was an all-purpose style back coming in and they beat out several top-notch programs to get him. You always hear that about recruits, but it was really true with Kimbrough as he came in with this speed and lightning in a bottle reputation. He's somebody they've been waiting on to break out a little bit. Coming into his junior season, you would like to see that for him and, and they've been waiting on Kimbrough to come around, waiting on Kimbrough to come around a lot like uh, Ralph, Ralph Abernathy that was at Cincinnati last year. He's that same kind of scat back who can take it the distance every time he touches it, but they would like to see a little more consistency out of Kimbrough. Jordan Matthews, of course, uh, the most prolific uh, wide receiver, not only in the history of the school, but in the history of the SEC in terms of receptions, about 112 as a senior. Um, he's going to be a huge loss, Unfortun or fortunately for Bandy, that the recruiting has been at a rate with James Franklin in the past few years where this kind of loss doesn't completely damage the unit like it would have possibly a couple of years ago. It's going to be interesting to see how they replace the Jordan Matthews. It's very difficult to replace a first-round type talent at wide receiver no matter what. But if you're at Vanderbilt, it becomes a little more difficult because the skill position talent tends to run a little bit behind the eight ball, especially at your wide receiver positions. And so replacing Matthews will be very tough. Jordan Cunningham is going to get a shot at replacing him, and every school has the type guys coming in that haven't got a lot of experience but have that talent. 
talent that you're interested in seeing. And Jordan Cunningham leads the list for the Commodores. And you also have Latavius Rayford, as well as an Alabama kid, uh, C.J. Duncan, who redshirted last year. He was a quarterback in high school, kind of an all-purpose type guy. He is somebody that you might want to keep an eye on because he's a stronger-built kid and can do some things uh, for this Commodores offense if he's picked up everything coming into his redshirt freshman season at the wideout position. Jimmy, I don't know if most people around college football really were aware of it, but this secondary was one of the best in college football over the past couple of years, specifically in 2013, with uh, Kenny Ladler leading the Commodores in tackles, also with five interceptions, and also Andre Howell with uh, four interceptions for this defense. And again, it was the secondary that really was the elite talent on this defense, and all four starters are gone. Uh, the defensive talent's pretty good coming back, but uh, in the secondary a bit thin. Vanderbilt has been really solid defensively for the last two decades, really. They've taken a beating uh, a lot of times when you look at the win and loss record and things of that nature. But one thing has held true at Vanderbilt, and it's been good, solid defenses, and sometimes they end up getting overwhelmed. But all the way back to the days of Court Chavis in the secondary at Vandy, they've been good. And so you expect them to be good, solid players in the secondary, play with good technique and do the type things that you would expect uh, a Vanderbilt athlete to do. They will be replacing everyone in the secondary. Uh, two sophomores are going to get a look uh, at corner first in Paris Head and Torrance McGaster. Both are about six foot tall, so they have good size and should be able to do some things at the line of scrimmage. Going to pull two juniors in at safety, so the guys have a little bit more experience uh, in the back end. So hopefully Vanderbilt will be able to replace the secondary with guys who have good size. Both safeties will be over 200 pounds, and, and you will, you'll like to see how they react early in the season as they get their feet wet and move into conference play. James Franklin turned this program around. We see success at Vanderbilt the last two years in winning 18 football games, 9-4, and four, followed by 9-4 and four that we've not seen in our lifetime. Not seen until the, since the early 1900s. Then you bring in uh, Derek Mason. Um, any early indications of what Derek Mason brings, what kind of football team, what his stamp could possibly be? Also, you've been around a lot of football teams, both on the high school and the collegiate level. Your thoughts about a coaching change and what's really important for that new coach to establish? In this change, Vanderbilt got a lot of excitement the last couple of years with James Franklin coming in from Maryland. And he really changed the mindset and the culture of what you felt of Vanderbilt football as a fan and just as an observer. And so you hope that Vanderbilt is able to capitalize and continue with the attitude that James Franklin and that staff brought with them to Nashville. Derek Mason is going to bring that same type attitude just from a different side. He's a defensive minded gentleman, but he's still going to bring that hard work ethic and the belief in yourself that you can do what you set forth to do. He's proven that all through his career. He did it at Stanford with similar circumstances. He he worked with Jim Harbaugh and and later uh, and oh wow I just forgot his name uh, the the head coach that took over for Harbaugh after he left to go to the NFL. And oh, uh, David Shaw. David Shaw and they really have that same mindset and mentality at Stanford. Physical assignment football. He's going to bring that to Vanderbilt and they should be able to be successful with that. They're going to move to the 3-4 just like you saw at Stanford and they're going to be big up front. They've got three guys that average about 310 pounds that's going to anchor down the front. You're going to have uh, Azubuke is going to drop back from his defensive end position and anchor an outside linebacker position at about 270 pounds and be very athletic with that weight. So the loss of Chase Garnum and Walker Mays will hurt but when you look, they played a lot of games without Garnum uh, last year. He was injured a lot. He was a Fairhope, Alabama product coming out of high school. Came to Vandy as a safety and grew into a linebacker. Very lightly recruited young man and really was good for Vandy. Walker May was very similar. Uh, he came to, to Vandy as a tall, lanky kid out of Birmingham and grew into a defensive end. I think they beat the Samford Bulldogs for him. So you can do things at Vanderbilt with the type of players that they're going to bring in. Those kids are going to typically have a good, strong work ethic and do things the way you want them. They're really happy with what Mason and the staff have brought. There's a different pace at practice right now. They're, they're moving around faster. They seem to be more in tune to what's going on. And the weight program has 
there are there are a lot of people raving about what they've done so far in the weight program. So I don't know that you will see the same number of wins this coming year because there's a lot of transition going on here. You lose Jordan Matthews, the quarterback position may be sure up if the Stephen Rivers transfer situation goes ahead and clears itself out. You may get another quarterback coming into the mix that could change things for them. However. I think right now the expectations are tempered just a little bit because you know there's a lot of transition, but everybody feels pretty good, I believe, at where this team is headed and where their staff is headed. Yeah, and you mentioned uh, Garnum, who had an exceptional 2012, led the team in tackles with 84, seven sacks, 12 and a half tackles for loss, but he did miss seven games, so they played still some really good football on defense without him for seven games uh, from a leadership position and from a talent standpoint as well. Hey, Jamie, uh, based on the situations you've been around in specifically college football, but at both levels, uh, the spring game, what does it mean? Does it matter? And specifically to this situation, we're not talking about a rebuilding project. Yes, it's a new coach with a new staff, so there's a comfort level that needs to be gained, but it's not a rebuilding situation. It's a very successful football team and a roster that knows how to win. So what are you looking for in the spring game and how important is what happens on Saturday? You can look at that from both sides. A lot of your more established coaches that have been in a program for a year or two or more, they go into the spring game and it's a little more of a fan day and a little more of a showcase. And your uh, typically in the spring, your established players may get fewer carries from the offensive running back standpoint or fewer reps at their positions just to avoid certain things as such as injuries and whatnot. I don't believe that that's completely the case at Vanderbilt right now because this new coaching staff, they're trying to figure out the young men that they have that they're coaching, and these young men are trying to figure out these coaches. So I think the Vanderbilt spring means a little bit more than a lot of your other programs do that don't have a lot of turnover in the coaching staff going into this year because coming into spring, all these coaches know of the kids or the game films that they've watched. They get to talk to them, see how they react to negative and positive things while they're practicing with them, and they learn these kids as they go. And these players are trying to impress these coaches because everybody's fighting for a job at this point. So I believe that you will see a little bit more meaning out of the Vanderbilt spring than you do at most of the other programs around the Southeastern Conference this Saturday. Jimmy Hancock writes for uh, secwriter.com. He's a contributor there. His main site is prepsnation.com. Jamie provides some awesome insight uh, as he watch the, watches the coaches' films. He's, he's used to breaking down personnel, gives us some great insight into the personnel um, around the SEC. Hey, Jamie, thanks so much for joining us. We appreciate the time. Absolutely, and as always, it's a pleasure, and I'll, I'll be uh, ready to come back on with you again. I, I really love it.